hey, I got Chick Flick Teal Donuts. You know why? Because today is Chick Flick Teal Day. It is National Chick Flick Teal Day and International Chick Flick Teal Day. Now, in case you're in another country halfway across the world or different time zone than me, uh, mark your calendar for Chick Flick Teal Day. What day is that, you're asking? That's right, brother. Every day is Chick Flick Teal Day. So what are we doing today? Uh, talk about clickbait. Ten string crack hack. What's that all about? Well, we are working on, we're just getting started on this thing. It's going to be affectionately known as the California Junk Pile. Oh, it's the California Junk Pile is celebrating National Chick Flick Teal Day as well. But there is a crack in this guitar right there and right here so we're gonna fix this crack we're gonna make a tool because this crack needs to be fixed from the inside and you can see that there's no access other than this F hole um, and you got to be careful sticking things in F holes because there can be long-term consequences so it is very windy outside and I hope it doesn't crack my shed while I'm fixing this crack anyway we are going to talk a little bit about the strains and stresses and what wood does when it cracks and why it cracks and why we need to put something on the inside to stop this crack from running all the way down. This guitar has cracked before. Um, we've done some videos or episodes on how to fix a crack in the side of a body. Um, episode link right up there right about now and we also have made some tools in the past um, like spool clamps and we're gonna introduce the big brother of the little spool clamp I wish they made these in chick flick teal anyway you're gonna see all this stuff in the episode so let's get the housekeeping out of the way um, give me a like, give me a, a subscription, and do whatever you do because, I mean, I don't dress like this all the time. So this is worth a subscription and a like. And if you don't like this, well, join me. Um, sticking on the theme of Chick Flick Teal Day, this is the matchbook of the episode. Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church. Now, I would suggest you get one of these. I would suggest you take your Chick Flick Teal matchbook and go to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, wherever there's one near you, and that you spark up and hot box a cool or a Marlboro with Father Manny while you are in there confessing your covetous sins. That's right. And finally, Barrel House Word of the Episode. I know that's what you all wait for. The word we're going to talk about today is jive, J-I-V-E, both a noun and a verb. Empty, deceptive talk. Anyway, I'm not going to say that word. You know what it is. It's called BS or bullshit. Uh, slang derived from the British derelict, dialect, excuse me, term G-Y-V-E, jive, meaning to banter or jibe, G-I-B-E. Like the latter, it was used as a verb. Beef to my baby, me and poor chaps do not agree. I love you, but I don't like the way you are jiving me. From Teddy Darby, Deceiving Blues, 1931. There is the Barrel House word of the day. So, I'm going to get a whiteboard set up so I can draw some things out for you. You're going to learn about the structural dynamics of something I'm totally making up as I go, but it's going to sound really believable. So that said, let's get to the bench. Oh, hey, Kendra. Yeah, this is the drip today, brother. The drip. Okay, guys, I have taken some of this low-tech binding tape and and outline the crack here i've got some other tape i'm going to introduce you to in another episode it's even lower tack than this but this guitar the back of it's pretty trash i don't know if somebody didn't put this 
theme on here. This guitar is older than it looks because I've noticed that there's kind of a V. This isn't too rounded off. The zip around here. The tuners, uh, yeah, they've been around a long time. And um, let's get back to where we can see here. There have been some other cracks in this guitar, both on the side and the back right here. And what I'm worried about is in the case of this one here, it got pretty wide and then it's running and running. And you got to find a way to stop this. But this crack is right here. It's taken off running down the side. And you can see, I think, if I got the camera angle right, there was a crack right here. So this thing has been dropped or um, something else. Now we know that if you take these guitars and change them in uh, the temperature that they're in from hot to cold really fast, there's going to be um, some cracking of lacquer and some things like that. Um, I think you're going to see that episode called the Northridge Nightmare right about there, right about now. I was talking about lacquer cracking, severe lacquer cracking, but You'll hear the guys that are playing jazz guitar on these arch tops. They're talking about the most minute temperature changes and feeling your fret ends coming out and things shrinking and stuff. So these instruments are highly sensitive to this. But let's take a look at the nature of this crack and what we need to do so it doesn't reappear or we start pulling uh, by fixing this one and pulling this in. That Something else is going to happen over here. So let's get the whiteboard and draw that out. Okay, let's draw out this guitar or attempt to. The neck is up there. The body is here. That looks exactly like one of my junk pile guitars, doesn't it? Let's look at the camera angle. Can you see that? Yeah. So the crack is right here. And it's running down this way, like so. We've also had cracks in the past kind of took on the same form here now I don't think this is a uh, damage from being dropped or things like that I think the one that was hiding up in this area on the side maybe was from that but this is everything separating so the bottom and the top are separating from the sides of the guitar and I think this is temperature stuff so like I said these guys that play these jazz arch tops these high-end things um, they are very, very concerned about humidity and things like that. Um, maybe us not so much. As I get a little bit better, maybe I'll be worried about that. But right now, I'm worried about getting this crack fixed. Now, let's say that I just glue this and put a spool clamp, and I push this one here and push this one here and push some hide glue down in here. A um, couple things that are kind of wrong with that. I know from being an arborist, the way trees work is there's this yin and yang thing going on where if there's something like a tree leaning this way, like so, this wood here is under tension, meaning it's being stretched, and this wood is under compression. So let's say you see a tree and it's bent over, and all of a sudden you notice the bark is popping up like this, or on the other side of the tree, you see that the bark down here is starting to develop folds. That's an indication that something is moving here again because for every up, there's a down. And I always say the fat kid's going to jump off of the teeter-totter when the equilibrium is broken. So, back to this. If I push these two together right now, the stress is right here where the, where the crack has stopped. So if I push these in like so, all that is going to do is push the force down to here. And it's going to crack right there and then it's going to run down. And it's, it's a never ending monster. So what I have to do is take a look. Is the grain running this way? Yes. Um, and I always tell people when you're doing... Uh, tail pieces on cigar box guitars or something and you're putting four strings on do this don't do everything in a row because the more uh, stress points and breaks you put on a grain the more likely it is to crack anyway we're getting way out in the weeds here so what I need to do here is go in from the inside and put something that is a patch 
with the grain running perpendicular to what this is and put it in there. And that's very difficult to do on a guitar like this because once you start placing this stuff and you're only working through an F hole on the other side, it's hard to figure that out. So I got a little trick here I'm going to show you. Again, with a 10 string and something that we can build with a few pieces of wood and a scrap that we have left over and the top of a cigar box. So, but the whole idea here is we're going to put a piece here and a piece here. I want you to think about it. If you're trying to fish this around from inside, a rectangular shape might not be the best because if this ends up one way or another, um, the grain needs to be running the other way. If I glue this on here and the grain is running the exact same way, this could split, especially if it's got a hole in it for a wire that you're going to use to pull it up through there. So let's have a look at what this looks like and the different things we'll need to finish this repair. Okay guys, first thing we're going to need is a, a couple of spool clamps. You remember the shorter ones we made. Uh, I may just made a longer version, which means the, the all thread is just longer. Um, and this will go across the guitar body instead of up and down on the side like this, like gluing the top and the bottom together. Um, always having a couple softeners, I use these rags like this, and that way when I'm going across the arched surface, um, the center might be higher than what's over here. So I want to be cognizant of that. So I always want this. Um, and then, guys, get some of this cork material. It has adhesive paper on the back. You're going to need this. My neck stand is made out of cork. I like that. Um, and always protect your guitars. So now, I'm going to need a couple pieces of wood. I'm going to cut plugs out of them. I'm going to make some stuff out of them. So, I like Patron boxes. I don't make my cigar boxes, the guitars out of these, but I like the wood. And, and I'm going to need the top wood and not the side. The side's pretty thick. Um, but this is plied. You can see that there's a couple different layers there. I hope I got the camera angle right. But there's a layer there, one in the middle and one there. That is actually going to help us when it comes to cutting plugs out of this stuff. Okay? Let's put that off to the side. Now, I need you to take a couple, get a couple pieces of wood that are about the size of a domino. Um, and uh, this is actually the thickness of a headstock. So it's about like this. So anyway, you end up with something like this. And I want you to mark off. Find the center of this, okay? Find the center of this. This is going to end up sitting here like so. I'm going to cut out right here. I'm going to cut a window in this right here. And then I'm going to put a tuner up here. And when I put these together, I'm going to make sure that the holes that I pre-drill and use to put the screws in are countersunk because this has to be this will end up sitting on the surface of your guitar, so it has to be smooth. I don't want um, screws sticking out or anything like that. But you're going to end up doing like this. There's going to be uh, comparable to a sewing machine, kind of, where the needle is going up and down, and then you've got this port right in here or opening. And so, ultimately, what this looks like is this. Okay, so hole cut there, this mounted to here, a tuner put on here. Now, I put a tuner that gives me lefty loosey, righty tighty. So when I turn it to the right, this is going to tighten because a string is going to come up through here, wrap around here. The other end of the string is actually going to be down in the guitar and it's going to be uh, run through a hole that has a plug that we're going to pull up with some glue on it and then we're going to use this to tighten the string up and pull the 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 plug that's going to limit the crack in the future up from inside the guitar and this is this gadget easy to make a number of minutes but look what's on the bottom it is cork paper I a cork on adhesive paper and I put a little glue on there. This is going to sit on the guitar top so make sure that it is protected.
but this is like a 10 minute project. Okay, let's go back to the Patron box and how thick that is in comparison to this. So when I'm cutting my plugs, I don't want them to be super thick. That is way too thick. I don't want a bunch of objects in the guitar that's gonna that's gonna be throwing sound off. And I know this is a cheap guitar and it's a junk guitar, but if I'm fixing better guitars, people are really cognizant and they'll say the way the lacquer is cracking and all that kind of thing lends to the sound of the guitar and makes it unique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a half inch plug cutter. This is bigger than the one that we use to cut uh, relic wood and stick it in the necks of the guitar. And then I'm gonna use a bit that's the same size as what I would use to pre-drill holes in a headstock for tuners. Now, if you go to cut these plugs like this and you just turn the bit on go, it's gonna walk all over the place and be weird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this to turn backwards and I'm going to get right over it and I'm going to turn very slowly. See what's happening there? I'm not over it enough. So let me get some pressure on this. I'm going to push down slowly at first like this. There we go. And I'm going to keep going backwards until I've got my cut started there and then I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of this like so okay right in the middle now you can see I've got a number of these done already um, I'm doing this ahead of time for a reason because once these pop out of here they're harder to work so I'm just going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to go over these a little bit and get everything knocked down this is actually the side that's going to go up towards the guitar. So now I just click the bit to run the other way. And I'm just going to slowly go through like this. And I've got my plug. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the side that goes to the guitar and everything around doesn't have any big jagged edges sticking out or anything like that because if it does it won't be effective if there's any sheen on it or whatever uh, hopefully dragging that it across the sandpaper is going to be good um, because I'm going to need the glue to stick to it but just basically want to feel and make sure that your plugs don't have any jagged edges it could cause a space between the guitar body and the plug that's for sure but again some 220 grit in a couple minutes and you're good to go okay i'm going to do my repairs with hide glue um, it is room temperature i've put it in a little warm water the guitar is warmed up i'm not the shed's not cold so i'm going to use that and i've put it in this glue bot and then, of course, I've got a damp cloth and my suction cup. And we've talked about using this when you're using out a piece of wood that you're uh, fixing a crack in. Once the glue is in, you don't do this and push it up and down. Because if it's creating suction to push the glue in by pushing this down, the minute you pull it off you're pulling half the glue back out. So you want to get in the ha habit of starting at the edge of the crack, up a little past it, and then pushing down and using this motion rather than doing this. Trust me on that. So we've got our glue, suction cup, and our damp cloth. Okay, so now we've got the guitar in the next stand is here. The strings are still on it. Uh, I've got there, and then of course I've got these bags, these Crown Royal bags or whatever you want, with some beans, bags of beans in them. And we're going to put that back here to make sure that everything is propped up. And we've got our crack. Let me see how we are in the camera angle. We can move that a little bit there and go down a little bit like so. But that crack is right there. So I'm going to take a 10 string. You can barely see it, see? But they're strong enough to play the guitar on. So I'm gonna take the end 
and the circle on the end. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to pull it together like this. I hope you can see. And I'm going to bend this like so. Okay. Okay, so I want to end up with this. I hope you, you can see that. It's got a couple twists in it. And it's got a loop. That loop's going to be really important. Now, I'm going to end up putting two plugs in here, which now you understand why this is folded in half. And I have two wires. Either way, whichever way you want to do this, this is handy to have this because you're going to need to fish that out through the F hole. Now, notice I have a Stumac a knife here, which I can kind of put in here and do a little bit of this kind of stuff or come in from where the existing crack is on the side or pop that up a little bit. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed this thin wire, I'm an old man now, down through that crack like so. And once it's in there like that, I can push this into the guitar and it's going to end up being down somewhere where the F hole is now. I'm going to want to make sure that I don't pull it through so I can make it go to the crack like that. And then I can use a little piece of this tape, which I should have had out in front of me. But I can put that right there and make sure that this won't pull through while I'm fishing around on the other side of the guitar. So now we'll turn this over and find this end of this through an F hole. Okay, you are not going to believe this. I'm really lucky because I turned it over and that wire is already coming out of the F hole. Do you see it right there? Now, if it hadn't, I can take my trusty coat hanger end with the ceramic magnet in it and fish it around inside of here and boom, look how easily that sticks to that. See? So, if I put this in here, this thing will literally jump right to it. You see that? All right, for this next step, we're going to need a couple of our repair plugs. Remember those? And we're going to take this wire. Probably a good idea to have some wire cutters and a ball of this string that... Hey, did you see that episode where I built a turkey out of using a Ronco, uh, what do you call it, a rotisserie oven? Where is my pointer when I need it? Abandon me on the job. I'll have to go to baby pointer. Anyway, right up there, right about now, Paul Miro saves your Thanksgiving. You got to see that one. Anyway, back to reality. Let's get this back up here, pointing where it needs to be. We're going to take some of this turkey string. Okay, we're going to take this wire. You want to remember, having that magnet around is going to be pretty handy to control this because we are going to cut the end off of one of these strings. Like so. You're going to make sure you know where the other one is. You can put it down this other F holder, whatever you want to do. But you've got this, okay. So now, we're going to put one of them plugs with the side that we want going up to the bottom of the guitar the right way, which is this way. So we'll push that through like that, and we're going to make sure that it stays where we can control it. We don't want it go back, going back down in there yet, okay? So do whatever you need to do to control that, but anyway, I'm going to take the end of this, and I am going to Make sure that I have a loop that is going to stay in place. This does not have to be fancy. But the moral of the story is this has to be able to sit up against that and not pull through. Okay? You with me? Now I'm going to take a piece of this turkey string. I think I just invented a new word. And I'm going to put this here like so. Now why am I doing this? The wire is not going to be a permanent part of the solution, only the plug. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to get the other one set up too because we're going to need two wires pulling two plugs. You with me? So I'm going to turn the camera off and get that done. 
Okay, so you'll see now that I have two of these plugs on separate wires running down into the body of the guitar. The other end of the wires are over there secured at the top of the crack. And I have these strings over here. So once everything dries up, I can cut the wire on that end and pull the strings out. Because again, these strings are not a permanent part of the solution. So now I'm going to take... So my hide glue, I've dampened this brush a little bit, and this is, it's controlled very easily. You see it ran back down, and I'm going to put a little bit of hide glue around the button, on the top of the button here, this repair piece of wood that I have. And I'm not going to goop it all over and get it near that hole. Remember, this is just going to stop things from going. I'm not trying to glue the whole body, but... Now, I can take, flip the guitar over, and by pulling, figure out which one of these strings is what by reaching under, because I am ambidextrous, and then I can pull this up into place, and then we'll figure out how to hold it. Okay, guys, now I want to show you something really cool. This is called a pin vise. It actually is just something that you can put very small drill bits in. I'm going to show you another little trick that you might gross you out, but have you ever hit your thumb or your nail and your nail's turning black and you got to relieve the pressure? Well, you can just set this to about the thickness of your nail and then just go in and turn this very carefully until it starts to ooze out. Isn't that great? I bet you everybody that was watching your channel with you decided to quit now, but I'm going to want to put that repair plug right there and here's the other end of the wire and so I'm just going to do this very carefully until I've got something big enough for that wire to fit there you see it's drilling through all right there you go we are all the way through okay now I can pull my wire over to right there and guess what when it slips in there, again, I can use my Stumac tool, whatever I want to do. But once that slips in there, I know that if I'm pulling straight up on the wire, that plug that I have in there is going to come up on the other side, right underneath there, and sit right where the wire is. You with me? Okay, this is where it's going to get a little tricky now. You always want to make sure you know where the end of this wire is. So you have a piece of this tape over here like this. But I'm going to pull this up like so and I'm going to make sure that my chicken wire or my turkey wire whatever I want to call it isn't getting hung up here and I can feel that and as I pull it I can kind of use the other end to guide it like so because I know as soon as it bottoms out that plug is right there okay so how am I going to make sure that that stays in place? Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make sure that I've got this end of the wire secure. I really do to the point where if it got pulled back through, this would not go through here. Now, this is where this scrapparatus comes in handy. I'm going to put this right there. I am going to take a few wraps. I'm going to cut the string off. Let's lay this down. I'm going to cut the string off, up, or this wire above where I need it to be, okay? Again, if you let this go right now, it's going to drop down in through there. So make sure you got what you need. I'm going to run it through the tuner hole, like so. I'm going to pull it fairly snug, like so. Then I'm going to come back around. And run it back up through here. See if I can do this. I could have been a little bit better prepared. Like so. Okay. Like that. There we go. And now, very gradually, I'm going to turn the tuner until that string tightens up. Again, I want to be directly over it, like so. Okay, I can feel it getting tight now. There we go. Now, 
since that is way down there, I'm going to go ahead and let it dry for a few minutes. Then I am going to take and make my repair here. We're going to suction cup everything in and then we are going to use our spool clamp over here like so. Again, protecting the body with one of our fancy high dollar rags like this and tighten this whole thing up. Of course, I'm going to put another uh, plug right about here doing the same thing. But guys, it's really this easy. All right, the last thing we should do, have to do now is just pull it out and, oh, there's a piece of wire. And there's a piece of wire. That means that those plugs are still in the guitar and everything's good and we've got a perpendicular patch against that crack. All right guys, there we go. Um, it's gonna set up. We can be relatively sure that this spot isn't gonna crack and run anymore. Um, and it was just as simple as using some parts you have laying around a uh, box fragments, cigar box fragments. For, for those of you that don't know about cigar box guitars, that's where I started. But anyway, a um, couple pieces of wood the size of a domino, uh, fingerboard cutoffs, and um, of course that 10 string that those of us that buy full packs of strings for four string cigar boxes, we always seem to have this one laying around in uh, supplies of plenty. Anyway, um, last words, always remember that cork material with the adhesive on it's great stuff. Always put it on things that are going to come in contact with your guitars. And don't forget, when you're using spool clamps that you make yourself, these threads, you don't want them touching the back of your guitar, so use a rag or something. And um, anyway, we're going to put tuners on this. We're going to use an old license plate for a pick guard. We've got a tailpiece to change. We've got all kinds of things to do with this. We're going to matchbook the neck and it will effectually become known as the California junk pile. So watch for that playlist. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you as this progresses. See ya. Yeah, I know this is ridiculous. You're not going to see this again. Believe me. Please do not let my mom or my oil field friends see this. You know. Anyway, I should have never done this, but it's too late, right?